Okay, we're going to do Niagara File, another cookbook recipe. Um, and again, here's the website if you want to look at um, any of uh, the latest and greatest NiFi stuff I put up there. And again, if you have any questions or any issues with uh, NiFi that, you know, I'd love to try and help you out, just um, send them to this uh, uh, email address uh, on the bottom here. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next recipe. Okay, this is recipe number five. And this is going to be a little different where in the most of the other uh, demos have been focusing on uh, NiFi. And this one's pretty much going to focus on how you can uh, configure and install ActiveMQ, uh, the JMS server, um, to get it working uh, with NiFi. So a lot of the, the discussion is going to be on how to get Act Act ActiveMQ up and running. So the basic problem is you want to configure ActiveMQ to work with your instance of NiFi and be able to use the NiFi JMS um, to access the uh, JMS server. And how you do that is, of course, you download ActiveMQ. Uh, you configure ActiveMQ uh, with a user with a set of permissions to access the instance. So you can actually configure ActiveMQ to have certain users that are just allowed to publish to the JMS server. And you can also configure ActiveMQ to only have certain users that are allowed to uh, read, um, in this case, topics from the JMS server. In this demonstration, the admin uh, user is going to have the ability to read and write to the ActiveMQ server. And then for um, NiFi, you just simply add the processors. There's a put uh, JMS processor and a get JMS topic to pull stuff from the, from the uh, JMS server um, using the ActiveMQ user you're going to set up. So you go to the ActiveM, go to the Apache website and download uh, Apache ActiveMQ. And the key file you want to edit here when you're configuring ActiveMQ is the uh, ActiveMQ.xml file. And that'll be located in the instance where you've unpacked your active uh, MQ um, software. In this demo, I just dem I just replaced the uh, standard port that's out of the box, which is 61616 with 10,000. So all our JMS communications is going to be done to uh, port uh, 10,000. And then I'm going to remove all the other transport connectors. There's like five or so different types of connectors you can do use. And I'm only going to be focused on one, the TCP connector, and the other ones I'm just going to get rid of. So out of the box, this is kind of what it looks like uh, in the uh, section, in the ActiveMQ.xml section, where the transport connectors exist. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, five different ones there. So the one we want to focus on is the first one that says Open Wire. And you can see the port number there is 61616. And what I'm going to do is delete all those other transport connectors and just keep the Open Wire one with the TCP, starting with TCP and use port 10,000. So we're going to edit the ActiveMQ file, and then we're going to go ahead and add uh, users with passwords, and we're going to assign them to different groups, and those groups will define um, whether you can read or write to the topic. So in ActiveMQ, again, in this ActiveMQ.xml file, we're going to add this section that actually defines the users that we're going to allow to access our ActiveMQ instance. So you see here I have three users. I have uh, uh, an admin user I call system and the password. I have a user that's going to be part of a group called publishers. So these people will be allowed to publish to the JMS uh, topic. In this case, I have the name Mike's Publisher and the password password underscore P. Then I have another group called consumers, and their only function is going to be they're going to be allowed to read from the JMS topic. In this case, this guy's username is Mike's Consumer. So here's the section where I actually define the username, passwords, and the groups they belong to. And then down here, I actually set the permissions. And again, this is in the ActiveMQ.xml file. I actually set the uh, permissions of what these users can actually access and do. So obviously, admin can do anything they want. Uh, if you look down toward the bottom there where it says Mike's.topic, you see where it says read equals. Uh, it tells you these are the groups that can read from the JMS instance. And then write, it says those are the groups that can write to the JMS instance. So only the publishers can write and the consumers can read. And of course, the admin can do anything we want. If you look one line up where it says uh, admin equals consumers publishers, and all the way at the right it says topic equals activemq.advisory. Uh, I leave that in there just in case if you're an activemq guy, admin, and you want to send some broadcast messages to everybody, this is how you do it through that. Um, uh, through th through this topic, and let's see. 
On the NiFi side of things, you want to add the uh, NiFi uh, processor called PutJMS. It'll look something like this in our example. We're going to use ActiveMQ. It references that um, tr transport connector that we set up. I know it said, it said TCP000, but you can use the local host. It's, everything's running locally in my box, so that's why it's 127.001. And you can see it references port 10,000. So if you change the port number, you got to set it to something other than 10,000. But we're using 10,000 for this example. Uh, you got the topic name, Mike's Doc Topic, which we defined in the previous slide um, as our JMS topic. What is it, a topic or a queue? And at the very bottom, you have the username and password. So this will be somebody that publishes uh, information to a JMS topic. Now on the other side, if you want to pull things from the JMS topic, you're going to use the get JMS um, processor. And it's very similar to the to the put one, except uh, on the bottom we're going to go ahead and use our um, consumer um, username and password. Again, if I had put um, for the get JMS, say Mike's pr Mike's publisher, it would fail because that guy does not have permission to read um, JMS messages off the JMS topic. And now give quite a little video demo. It kind of goes fast, but it's a video, so just pause it and rewind it and watch it again or something. But um, I think it's pretty cool. So it'll give you a good uh, first step toward uh, using uh, installing ActiveMQ. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is download the ActiveMQ uh, software off Apache. It's free. So you just go to the ActiveMQ uh, website, and we're going to go ahead and download the latest release. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and just download the zip file and then unzip it into our uh, local directory here. Let's go ahead and unzip it. And there's our ActiveMQ directly unzipped. So you see it's comprised of binaries and comp and data and everything like that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and look at the uh, comp directory. And at the very top there, you can see where it says ActiveMQ. And that's the configuration file we're going to key on for this uh, demonstration. So let's go ahead and edit that. And that is the configuration file for ActiveMQ. So there's a lot of stuff in there, and we're going to insert some stuff in there later. But for now, let's go down to the transport connectors. And these are all the types of different connectors that ActiveMQ supports. Uh, like I said, I only want the first one, so I'm going to get rid of these bottom four. So delete those, and we'll just keep the TCP open wire one. Uh, I also want to change the uh, uh, port number from the default 61616, like I said, and we're going to make it um, 10,000 instead. So let's change that. Save that out. And all I did was just again change the port number right out of the box. So let's go ahead and start uh, ActiveMQ. So we'll just go to the bin directory in ActiveMQ. Uh, we'll CD to it. And all you get you to do to run it is type in ActiveMQ space start. And now we're starting ActiveMQ. So right out of the box, it's pretty easy to start up. The only thing I did, again, was change the port number. Uh, this instance is wide open, so it doesn't require any usernames or passwords to get in. Um, there is a default one you can they use for the, ad, uh, for the admin to access the console, which I believe is admin admin, but I'll show you that in a little bit. So here it is here. So we're going to log into our ActiveMQ. So it's admin admin. And you can see the port number up top there is 8161. That's the default. And then this is the ActiveMQ GUI. So if you look around and see, there's a home directory, there's queues, there's topics. You can see all the queues. You can see all the topics. Uh, you can see the subscribers, who subscribes to it, and all the connections. Um, topics is what we're going to key on. So we're only going to be looking at topics for this example. NiFi directory, and we're going to go ahead and start NiFi. And we're going to drop in an, uh, um, an active. Uh, 
put in uh, GMS and we're going to go ahead and generate a flow file just for testing. this a topic. And let's see, I'm going to give the URL what we had set up before, and I'm going to make the use localhost, but it'll start with TCP, and it'll have a local host, and the port number is 10,000. I'll give it a topic name of my.topic, and that's it. No username or password is required because we set it up to be wide open. So this is my flow. I'm generating a flow file. It's going to send a flow file out every 10 seconds. It's going to be one kilobyte long. It's going to be a text file. Okay, pretty standard stuff. I'm going to send that file to the JMS topic. If it fails, I'm going to the left. If it's successful, I'm going to the right. So just a demonstration to see how it works. Again, using ActiveMQ, uh, here's my URL. It's a local host. Again, port 10,000. Destination name is the topic name, and then again, no username or password because it's wide open. So let's go ahead and start it up. So let's see what we got. We got one that went there through success. Now let's look at our topics and see what we got. In the very bottom, you can see that my topic has been created, and we already have two messages that have been sent to that topic. Let's keep refreshing. Every 10 seconds, it should go up one. So let's see if it goes up one here. Yeah, so it went up one to three. And you can see we have three here waiting in our little queue. So that worked. Okay, wide open. We just sent a JMS message to their active vacuum queue JMS topic. So now what we're going to do is actually try to secure this. So let's go ahead and add some users with permissions. So I'm going to pretty much just cut and paste some stuff here that um, I've come up with. Um, I'm going to add a new section into the activemq.xml file called plugins. And what we're going to do is insert some, create some users. Go ahead and do that. So we have simple authentication. You can see the three users I'm adding here. It's um, a system user. Uh, <coughs> he's going to be part of the admin group. It's a, you know, it's a password. Um, we have a publisher called Mike's Publisher. Password is public, password underscore P. And he's going to be part of the publishers group. And then we have a third user called Mike's Consumer. Password is password underscore C. And he's going to be part of the consumers group. Okay, so there we're defining our users with the passwords and the groups they belong to. And on top of that, we're going to go ahead and add the permissions now. And, okay, so we're going to insert um, uh, associated permissions, what these people can do. So here's where we actually put the authentication, the authorization. So the admins can do pretty much anything. They cre can create queues and topics, uh, as you can see here. And on the next line here where it says uh, consumers, uh, it says what uh, topics they can actually access and use. So uh, let's see here. At the very, very second to the bottom, it says that this gives authorization for uh, reading and writing for my two types of groups, uh, the consumers and the publishers. Again, this is just for broadcast messages for ActiveMQ. You don't, I, don't th I, you, I just leave it in there. What's really key is the bottom one where it says Mike's topic. Uh, that topic says Mike's topic says that it says who can read to that topic, who can write to that topic, and who has admin privileges to that topic. So you can see the consumers group can read from it, and the publishers group can write to it. Okay, and the admin group can do anything it wants to it. So again, if a publisher tried to read from it, it would fail because it doesn't have permission to do that. If it tries to create a topic, um, it will fail too because the uh, publishers and consumers don't have permission to create a topic. And I'll show you how that works too. So let's go ahead and restart ActiveMQ again. Let's go ahead and just look and see what topics we have. It should be all cleared out. Okay, we have my topic that I defined. So that's there. Let's go ahead and delete that. So now we have no topics available. 
And let's go ahead and configure our put JMS to actually use something. Let's go ahead and try and start it. Let me clear out everything so there's nothing in the queues waiting for us. Okay. So now we see that it failed because we have no username and password because we secured our ActiveMQ JMS. It's failing because we have no username and password set up. So now we have to configure the put JMS to have a username and password. So because um, how we configured it, we're going to put in our uh, publisher uh, username and password. So let's see, we call that Mike's Publisher. That's our username, and then the password is password underscore p. And then we're going to have to set our topic, a destination name, which is Mike's uh, topic. Now this topic doesn't exist, so this should fail because it's going to try to create a topic that doesn't exist. But let's just show you what it looks like as an example. Let's go ahead and clear everything out and start everything up. Okay, and you can see that we're failing now because we're not authorized to create the topic. Remember, only admin can create the topic, not our Mike's publisher. So what we're going to do is go to the admin part of ActiveMQ and create the topic ourselves. Since I'm logged in here as admin, I can do this. So let's create the topic, mikes.topic. And now it's there. So now our NiFi instance should be happy by uh, writing information to that topic. So let's see. Let me clear this out. Stop it. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to start it up. And if you look on the right, you can see now that we're now successfully publishing topics. If you look at our admin part, we can see that we're actually getting data. Let me refresh this. And you see we've already received four messages. Okay, so it's a little running a little more secure now. Now for uh, consuming messages, let's go ahead and read those messages off the topic. We just uh, simply do the uh, processor get JMS topic. And it looks very similar to the put, except we're going to be using a different user. So it's again ActiveMQ, TCP, port 10,000, Mike's topic. Uh, the username we're going to use is one that's allowed to consume uh, topics, and that's going to be called Mike's Consumer. And we're going to put the password in there for that one, which we can assign as, Mike's, as password underscore C. And we'll apply it, and we're going to go ahead and start sending some topics over. That's just an old message. I won't worry about that. So let's go ahead and replay this. And you can see on the right we received a message. And if you want to look at the logs for the message, um, see what we're actually receiving off the JMS topic, you can look over there. And the thing to point out here, I'll show out a later lesson, is um, these are everything you receive, the attributes. If you see things that start with the word JMS, that's something we pass through from the um, original topic person. So the, peop the topic on the left sent that information. And we can refresh it. Look, we've already gotten 25. So um, again, you can play with this uh, ActiveMQ GUI to see who's subscribed to you. Um, see what other users are doing. So you can see we have two people subscribed to us. In this case, it's going to be the subscriber and the, and the um, um, publisher. Okay, you just play around with it, and that's you know, just get a good understanding of how it works.